Following the government shutdown as it enters its second day. Joining us right now with their outlooks is Peter Bain. He's the CEO of Old Mutual Asset Management. Jerry Webman is the chief economist at Oppenheimer Funds. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. And uh, you. let's start off talking about this uh, right. situation. Peter. Right. Well, I think uh, what was interesting to me, and I was disappointed actually by Gene Sperling's comment, because Gene's a, he's a smart guy and he's a good guy. Well, and it was interesting, it crept into John's comments this morning in anticipation of the interview, the magic word that appears to be coming from the administration is complacency, right? You saw Sperling's <coughs> comment, a false sense of complacency about the market's response to the shutdown. I don't think it's a false sense of complacency. I think it's an accurate sense of disgust. And I think that what you're going to see, and this is very disappointing and very cynical, you almost have a situation where you're seeing the administration and Washington generally trying to talk the market into a panic over this issue because I think their view is if they can convince the market that the stakes are high enough, which they obviously are, and the likely consequences are disastrous enough, which they are not and will not be, that the market craters, that will put greater pressure on the Republican Party to drop the complaints and move on so and get a deal is, done. Is, is, is this debt ceiling in particular? Particularly. Uh, the, the government shut down, maybe yeah. we can get through this for a week or something, but the uh, debt ceiling in particular, this is 15 days away at this point. There's well, a lot of acrimony. Is that the, um, I, the fiscal I took, cliff? I took a look at the stats, and there, since 76, right, there have been 17 shutdowns. Mm -hmm. The median duration was four days. But the longest was 21. Right. Well, okay, you know, we're 15 days away from the debt ceiling deadline. It could well be that you're going to see the administration try and push the shutdown long enough so that you end up folding these th two things together. Honestly, that actually makes sense to me. At it this makes point. total sense I, to I me. I mean, you don't want to do these stupid negotiations again and again. <laughs> Wrap it all up in one big deal. Why do you face it. Armageddon and solve it once, and then five days later you have Armageddon again? But are you saying the administration's wrong and that the debt ceiling is not an absolute um, panic point? The Defaulting on United States government debt is a panic point. Okay. So, Clay so what Calhoun, are you so sanguine about then? What's that? What are you so sanguine about? Uh, actually, I have great faith that ultimately, if the market does not fall into a false sense of complacency or a continued state of disgust, if the market stays steady, focuses on the economic merits, because the recovery does continue, and doesn't panic, then I think the administration in Washington is going to come to its senses and realize, all right, we're not going to default on the debt, we cannot default on the debt, and what happens is the Republicans, you know, cave on Obamacare, and the administration moves on some spending initiatives, and you get Down the a, road. Yeah, yeah, and you get a budget deal. Yeah. I mean, we need a, you need a budget deal here, which you, you hope this deal. would, would right. really produce. I mean, the, the crazy thing about this continuing resolution business is basically it says, let's spend the same money that we spent in 2011 on the stuff in 2014. Yeah. We're going to fill the same potholes. So we need a budget deal. We've actually made, I think we always forget, we've made more progress on the federal debt and deficit than, than we remember, but right? Not we've because gone, of anything that Congress and the administration. No, well, because of know, underlying if you, if you don't activity. think, if you, you listen, we don't write it. Well, but that. they did that, Becky. The sequestration was a fact that they couldn't get together uh, and come up well, with a Well, but it, uh, it's not a very good way to reduce the debt and the deficit, but it, it did, it's taking it to about 3% this year, lower next year. Uh, we did it as we usually do in an incremental, sloppy kind of way, but we are in much better shape with that than we were uh, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. Yeah, the deficit we did it a bad of GDP is down because GDP has recovered. Yeah, God, which is what we should be. The, that's what the interesting thing for us to be talking about right. is that despite all the noise we've made right. and all the complaining, this economy just continues to grind along. You know, Hamble, the business of the country is business. And what, you know, Becky, you and I have talked about this before. What, what we really, what really the interesting thing is in spite of all this, and I know you're tired of hearing about it, the deleveraging cycle. Uh, <laughs> Why it is, uh, seven years, seven biblical years, <laughs> it, you know, w business has done pretty well. Yeah. We made good money, and, and as Peter says, GDP has grown more than anybody, I think, would have expected. Yeah. Why has that happened? That's the interesting question. I don't think GDP has grown more than anyone would have expected. Well, I they've I, had to, they've had to well, they, hear people right, Every single forecast has been, has been well, I, that's I, every year it's been down. Right? Than it should be. I, I, I'm not saying it's been a bit, you know, I, we'll take 2%, right. obviously, but it's been lower oh. than people had forecast well, every single year. Well, certainly lower than the Fed forecast, and we kept saying it's going to 3%. Yeah. That's a fair point, Joe. I, I take his point. Job disappointing, and I think job growth has been disappointing because of uncertainty and disappointment in continuing administrative policies.
Well, you have huge regulation. You have serious impairment in hiring plans based on uncertainty about policy going forward, especially Obamacare. I mean, it grew at least. Oh, it's I mean, there's parts of yeah. Europe where you know it's it's better than if it was then contracting. Oh, Although Europe's yeah. now yeah. coming back grew. faster than yeah. people thought too, which yeah. is encouraging. Okay, let me ask you a different question. If yeah. you were to somehow push Obamacare off literally for a year, uh, yeah, would that actually be better for the? Mar it might be better for the market short term, but would it be better for the long term? You've got to settle the issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, can exactly. I one one small comment because this should be an economic session, not a political one. I do find it interesting that in this discussion, nobody's actually arguing that Obama, that the Affordable Care Act, is a good piece of legislation. All you hear them say, and John said it, they repeat the talking points. It was passed by both oh. houses, signed by the president, and upheld by the, Const by the Supreme Court. It doesn't mean it's a good law. It doesn't oh, mean it's, it's good it policy, it's but it's got to get settled. And it, it should well, be fixed. It's got to get settled. About, think, go back. I was, I, I was thinking about Medicare Part right. D, right? right. We, we, well, but wait a minute. So Medicare Part D passes. Everybody knows it's flawed. It, they try to put an effect. It doesn't work. In fact, my thought was, hey, this was really clever. Bush passed this thing to get it out of the Democrats' hand. They made it so complicated it can't possibly work. Well, there were a few amendments, some administrative it changes. Great, and it's yeah. too expensive. But it got we probably cheaper and have it, done it, it did But work. it kind of finally it worked. Did, yeah. So what has to happen here, of course something that massive and complicated isn't going to work when it begins to, to be implemented. What business needs is glitchy. certainty. It's going to be glitchy. Be what, glitchy. Government, <laughs> what government, what business needs is just tell me the rules. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I'll live with the rules. I might hate them. I might vote against them. I'll do whatever Just I can do to block CEO. them. Jerry's but exactly right. Tell me right. what the hell they are. Oh, I said it again. That's all I want. We're doing, our, we're doing our insurance planning for next year. Tell me the rules. I can work with them. I just got this long memo from our HR department about... You're not going to do this, but here's what we got to tell you about. Just tell me the rules. We just got one, too. I don't know if you got one. I bet you guys did. Sure, you did. Yeah. Sure and you sent one out, too, right? Your total, no. your total wild side is in your socks. It, my wild side is... Your wild side, you got normal socks, but your wild side is... Patterns. Is sharp. How about patterns the mixing patterns everywhere? Patterns. I have very dull socks. I think it works, so is this... You, is that working for you? No, it is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe it, but, but I think it is. Shocking, isn't it? Well, there's yellow, there's a white collar, there's stripes here, stripes I, here. I have an English friend here. who said I apparently look like Rupert Bear. But, but you know what? Not you're Rupert so conservative from here on up. The the you're so conservative from here. The glasses and the perfect uh, gray hair. Yeah. You, but then it's like you can step out down, down here, here, right? It's got Cognitive poor webmen, all you got are socks. All I got is socks. I'm born here sitting in an old blue shirt. No, but your ideas were not boring. Your ideas were not. I'm glad you think that. Next. Okay, next. Democrat.